Welcome everyone to uh, Pact Now Connect. Um, my name is Matthew Lewis, my pronouns are he, him, his. So I'd like to introduce, uh, before we all go around, my co-facilitator for the evening. Um, I'll let you tell yourself. Well, I'm Naomi. I come from Children's Wisconsin. Um, I'm here, I've been a lover of this book, um, and this has really, within the last year, did a really change on me within the last year. So I'm excited to be here and to talk about it with you all. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Just starting out how I felt about the book I discussed with you yesterday. One of the big things for me is I've read the book about three times now. And to see when I first read it and how I feel about it now are completely different. Um, there's one way to read the book and to read it from an outside scope, but to be a trans woman living in these experiences, it, it, it's so much more impactful for me now. So that was one thing I did take away, and a lot of the stories now are really fitting to situations that we go through, whether career-wise, whether relationship-wise, rather just our, us trying to find ourselves in our womanhood and, and accepting ourselves and, and moving past dealing with people who won't accept us for ourselves. So yeah, that's like just my whole little sum of like what I got from it starting out. How did you like the book? Oh, uh, I loved it. Um, I'm a, it, I'm one of those things where I love a book where it feels like I'm getting coffee with the author. And mm -hmm. I did feel like the, the com a lot of the conversation or a lot of the book felt like I was like sitting across, I was like, oh yes, and Carmel Macchiato, tell me more. Um, so I really, I really appreciated the conversational aspect of the book. Um, One thing I really appreciate about her writing style is very much so like, she lets you know that this is my experience. Mm -hmm. This is my experience. I'm not telling you that this is your life. This, I'm not telling you you're going to go through this, but this is mine. If you can learn from it, great. However, once again, this is my experience. And I love a person who can write from their experience and don't try to write as an expert. Mm -hmm. because yeah, that's usually when it starts to become problematic but it's like literally writing from this is what I went through if you can learn from it great and I hope I'm helping somebody but if not I'm just doing this release for myself and I can appreciate that so much more than a person who's like oh I know everything about trans or I'm the voice or the spokesperson for the trans community mm -hmm. I like that she writes from an honest place so we kind of touched on this, but I guess I just want to get the general group feeling. Uh, what do you think was the author's purpose in writing the book? Why do you think Janet wrote this book? And um, what ideas was she trying to get across? I think we've touched on this, but I just want to cement it so we have it in her words. Um, I feel like, one, it's, a, it's an honest story. And, and you, being a trans woman, a lot, it can inspire and help a lot of trans women. So that's great. And I, would, I feel like that's a big part of it. But also, Janet Mott, throughout a lot of her professional career, was very passable. And until she told people, the reactions changed. So I feel like with this book, she was able to like let people know like there is not a certain look for trans. There's not a certain identity or career path for trans women. Um, because she's a very successful journalist. And that's not the ordinary or normal job of a trans woman. Um, she's an award winning, she has a master's degree and things like that. Those are not things that you normally see coming from this trans community. So I feel like with this, she's able to make shockwaves, let people know and let the society see like trans women in different light. But also like, she also shares a lot of experiences from a lot of things that a lot of trans women go through. Rather it was from her history in sex work or, or her history dealing, dealing with family and drug abuse and Dylan would not be an accepted and things like that. So those are all powerful, but she also gives a, a different perspective of being a professional trans woman now. And showing like, hey, we can still do the same jobs and we are still being able to be successful. And we are able to find love and we're able to do all these different things. So I, I really appreciate the book for that. Absolutely. Thank you, Naomi. Um, I asked the question because I really believe in the importance of storytelling being like authentic and like people telling their own stories. Um, so this was, um, for me, I think one of the first times I read, I was like, this is not someone else telling me about a, a community that they don't belong to. Um, and that was just really impactful um, for me. 
Um, any other thoughts about the storytelling method, the writing structure, or just for even for those who didn't get a chance to read, like um, what you believe to be the importance of memoir, of like autobiography? I'm trying to like read the quotes and stuff down here. And I'm oh, sorry. I'm like, okay. Well, you know, um, oh, go ahead, name it, sir. Her writing style is very, I want to say eye catching because it's honest. It's like, you, there's some memoirs that start a little, you know, added a, add a few extra here and there, but it's just like very, very like raw. And it's like, hey, Here's some facts, but this is my experience. This is what the CDC tell you, and but this is what I went through in Hawaii. And a lot of times we don't get that perspective from being a trans woman. A lot of times our story gets told for us, and it's made. We usually are made a joke in the story. Mm-hmm. We either killed off or we're the joke, and we never get no context or any characterization about us. So we not ever seen as characters. We can't see ourselves on TV because the only time that we see ourselves, we are made as a joke. Or we're made to look at like we're freaks or we're sick or these different things. So to read something like this, although there's there's never really been a book by a trans person as popular or as publicized as this. Mm. And um, I appreciate it. But I also understand that it also was very, very much so pushed because of passability and, um, you know, the right connections and things like that. Because it, as we see, there's a lot of queer literature out there, but this one got pushed so fast or pushed so hard because of everything else around it. Not saying that it's not a good book or not saying that it doesn't have any context or we can't learn from it, but it's just that I understand. And I'm glad that she's able to use that to push this story and to push these things so that we can get some stories out there because right now we don't have any, none that look like us. Absolutely. I um, I also agree that um, this particularly was also special for me because of the racialized aspect of it. Like I, I don't often, um, I think a lot of literature by black queer and trans folk has just been lost or never published. Um, and so for me, I love that, like, I have this hard bound copy of like a black trans woman talking about her life at, whereas like, I'm currently digging through other black queer literature and it's like pieces and it's like people like I scan this library book and some of the things are crossed out. But like, if you look really closely, you can like see excerpts, um, from history. And so, um, I always think that's so important to celebrate because I think so many times marginalized voices just aren't allowed in the canon and then we lose out on stories. It's also why I enjoyed that she opened each cha- um, each section and um, with a quote by like a gray black writer. You know, she yeah. paid so much homage to the legacy of black writing to get her to this point. Um, that was just like my heart, special place. Did your opinion of the book change as you read it? It did. Um, when I first read this, I was in a space where I was presenting myself in a masculine state. So I read it as, uh, oh, as I was outside of the community. Reading it the last two times as a trans woman and been dealing with a lot of those experiences in my current life, it, it resonates so much more. Like dealing with the abuse and dealing with bad partners and dealing with just seeing myself in my career and it, it, it really changed me this time because I'm living it. And until you're really like in it, it really doesn't, like you'll be like, oh, that's sad that you've never experienced that. But now that you're experiencing it, it's just like, oh, this is what that feels like. This is, this is pain. It's, and I got to see myself so much more this time around because I actually feel like I am in this space and I like redefining what I see as really within myself. So it shook me a little bit different. I did want to say that I did not like reading the first like two chapters. Um, sometimes I don't like when authors are overly descriptive. So like hair helmet and slinky oils. I was like, okay, I get it. Like the hair was super slicked down and a, a helmet. What happened mm-hmm. to the story? 
But then I, I started to appreciate it. Like the more and more like she would get into a story, I was like, oh, I thank you. Like I needed this in-depth visual to really get, you know, the cultural influences, like the cultural stylings of like the different locations she was in. Um, and plus I just, I just grew to love her description of her own hair. Um, <laughs> like I love when people find something about themselves that they're just like, I love this part of me. And just the way she describes her hair fall, like falling over her face or like moving while she's dancing. I was just like, I got, as much as I was excited to hear Janet, I was like equally excited to hear Janet's hair. Oh. You know, I, I like that. Mm-hmm. Right. It was like self-love. Yeah. I really loved it. I, it's just so, so great. Yeah. One of the questions I found online was like the soundtrack of the book. And I really love like throughout this book, like we get so much music from Janet, whether it be from her parents or her influences. I was like, I have to make a playlist of this book. And like, it's one that I just think is one of my favorite parts about reading it was like, oh, like I get to hear too. Like not only am I seeing, but like I'm, I'm feeling the era that you were in. And um, yeah. yeah. You speaking about her hair really resonates with me because everyone has like that one, that one or those features that they really, really love. Mine is like my skin and my high cheekbones. Like I moisturize my skin. And I take, like, people don't understand. I tell them all the time, all I got in this world is my lips and my skin. That's it. And, like, sometimes you just attach yourself to those things. And right now, like, you, you're speaking of, like, a soundtrack to it. That's why I've really been listening to that NDRE Yellow song. Because it just reminds me of, like, fun and fun beaming on your skin. And, yeah. And it's just, like, it just makes you happy. And it just makes you, like, once you find something, like, especially, like, when you're in the midst of transitioning, it's really hard in those early stages to find your, to feel beautiful, or to feel like you're, you know, or when, when your body starts changing and you don't know exactly how it's gonna even out or where things are gonna start moving and shaking and going. It's like, one thing about her book is, it really shows like it's a process. It's a process and just because you get to that point of feeling like, oh, I've reached pretty, it's still a process.